What's up guys and welcome to Friday Flights. Today we're going to be testing a gluten-free IPA. Oh, and we're also going to check out G-Sync performance on FreeSync monitors. One of NVIDIA's big announcements at CES 2019 was starting on January 15th, you can download a driver update and use G-Sync on compatible FreeSync monitors. That news wasn't without its caveats though. First, the driver update will only apply to 10 and 20 series cards, even though G-Sync technology dates back to Kepler and the 600 series of cards. NVIDIA also claims they're going to be testing every single FreeSync panel on the market and has already tested 100 of them that are currently available, but only 12 of them met NVIDIA's strict standards. I happen to have two FreeSync monitors here in my studio that are not G-Sync certified. That is, they are not tested and approved by NVIDIA's strict standards. So today we're gonna to run through the setup process on both of these panels, find out if they actually work, what the performance and experience actually is, and if they're really as bad as NVIDIA claims they're going to be. Up first is the BenQ EX3501R. It is a 35 inch ultra wide panel with a 3440 by 1440 resolution. It runs at 100 Hertz with FreeSync and HDR support. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up the NVIDIA control panel and we're gonna go to change resolution just to make sure we are at the right resolution and refresh rate. So here we are at 3440 by 1440 and a 100 Hertz refresh, which is perfect. Now, if you're like me and you spent about an hour yesterday trying to figure out where the setup G-Sync menu option is over here on the left side of the window, then you have the wrong cable plugged in. Now, as I read through the documentation, I learned that G-Sync over FreeSync is not available over HDMI in any way, shape, or form. You have to use DisplayPort 1.2 or 1.4. However, in the case of the BenQ EX3501R, if we plug in a DisplayPort, we're also gonna lose HDR support. So this is a situation where you're gonna have to choose which feature you want enabled more. And a quick cable change later, and my screen blacks out. Hold on, there we go. And a quick cable change later, and we have a setup G-Sync option. Now this part is a little bit confusing, and let me explain why. So step one is a checkbox that says enable G-Sync or G-Sync compatible. And then there's two options under that that says enable for full screen or enable for windowed and full screen mode. So I'm gonna check the box, and then I'm gonna check enable for windowed and full screen because I want FreeSync to work in both instances. Step two is select the display I would like to change. So I select my BenQ EX3501R. Option three is a checkbox that says enable settings for the selected display model. So step three is literally, yes, I actually want to check the boxes that I just checked in steps one and two. Also of note on this page is we have a little disclaimer below the checkbox that says the selected display is not validated as G-Sync compatible, which means it is not one of Nvidia's chosen 12 panels that are fully compatible and met all of our strict standards. Once you're done there, click apply, and you can go ahead and close out. All right, let's play a little Doom. Let's do something that'll uh, definitely get above the 100 FPS mark. I wish you all could see the absurdity of my gaming setup right now. There's a boom mic that's sitting right here. It's right above my head. Uh, this camera is sitting where I normally sit to edit video. Um, I've got the sun pouring in on me and the camera exposure cranked way down, so I'm probably underexposed and the window's probably overexposed because we're in Oregon and the sun can't decide if it wants to stay behind the clouds or come out and play. Let's take a look at settings here. Advanced, we are on ultra all the way across the board. 8XAA, uh, 3440 by 1440. So yeah, we are definitely running a little bit faster. We're at 150, 168 FPS. So we're definitely outside of the scope of what FreeSync can handle. So I'm gonna start a benchmark and let's go play. Did I miss him? I knew he was coming. So I gotta say so far, this is a very pleasant experience and I'm not noticing any of the symptoms that NVIDIA said I was going to experience. No stuttering, there's no input delay, there's no lag, there's no screen blanking. Oh, and he scores right out of the gate. Heck yes. <laughs> I didn't earn it, but I'll take it. <laughs> like, it's kind of what I wanted to happen, but I didn't expect it to just kind of float in there. So this is really interesting. I wanted to run one more test before I switched monitors here, and I'm kind of glad I did this. So 
I'm running a UFO test or uh, testufo.com. Uh, it's a really great website to test your refresh rate and test different aspects of monitors as far as gaming performance and soldering performance goes. The test that I'm running right now is frame rate slowdown simulation. So what it does is it runs a test at 50 FPS for a couple of seconds and then it slows it down to 25 FPS. Now on the monitor, it's handling it just fine when it's in windowed mode. However, when I go into full screen, And now it's not gonna do it. Oh, there it goes. So that monitor blinking situation that Nvidia claimed would happen just happened when I dropped to 25 FPS. Now I didn't experience that in game, but it is happening occasionally on this panel. There it goes again. And it seems to be when my mouse is moving across the screen, which is kind of weird. It's only blinking when my mouse, which you can see in the monitor right there, goes to the top right corner and only the far top right corner. Now there's, there's a UI element there that is the full screen element. I can I can move my mouse all the way over to that and I'm just fine. If I touch that top right corner, the, mouth, the monitor blanks out. Okay, so I'm not sure if that's on uh, NVIDIA or not. So this is their G-Sync test. So what this does is it scans a refresh rate from 100 Hertz down to, I believe 25 Hertz. For the most part, it's working pretty well. Although I did get the one blank out there a second ago. Yeah, there's no tearing to be seen on these, well, maybe a little bit there at 29 FPS when it dropped out, but really, really solid down to that point. Or maybe not, because it's blanking out at other random times too. So that is not running at 60, or at 100, that's running at 60. There, we're running at 100. Okay, that's very interesting. Going from windowed mode to full screen, it seems to have a hard time transitioning up to full screen 100 hertz, even though we're already at full screen 100 hertz. Interesting. So I didn't experience any issues during gameplay, and I will be reviewing the footage to verify that I didn't see any screen tearing. Uh, and my gameplay was absolutely fantastic in all three games that I tested. Uh, it's only when I got to the synthetic test here that I ran into a little bit of an issue with the screen blinking, which is something Nvidia said may occur as a possible issue. Uh, I'm still up in the air as to whether it was caused by the monitor or by the, the site itself, although I've never had problems with the site itself causing blackouts like that. Uh, but interesting nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get this monitor swapped out for my Pixio PX276HTN panel, which is a 1440p 144Hz panel, and we'll see how that one performs. So we're going to have to improv here a little bit. I'm going to change systems to connect up to this machine, mainly because I can't find the uh, the desk stand for this. This uh, is typically attached to my streaming PC and it's clamped to my desk. So I'm just going to run my Threadripper system via a DisplayPort cable over to the screen and we'll run the same test again, but this time with a 1080 Ti. So I'm running this DisplayPort cable haphazardly across my desk and a phrase crosses my mind. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. Remember that in networking, kids. So we just ran into an issue that's gonna save me heaps of time. So I connected my Pixio PX276H up to my 1080 Ti via a really good quality display port cable. And it's not showing up as an Nvidia connected display, nor is it giving me the menu option to configure G-Sync on the display. But as Adam Savage says, every result's a result. And this not working as a G-Sync compatible monitor just kind of proves that there's still some bugs in the drivers to work out. And I just spent the last hour trying to connect this up to other machines, other cables, other video cards. Uh, I think I tested two different machines with three different graphics cards in total, and none of them actually worked. Now, I do know that the Pixio is a FreeSync compatible monitor because I did have it hooked up to a Vega 64 and it ran in FreeSync when I did the review proper about a month and a half ago. But for right now, I think we're gonna have to put this one on the maybe someday shelf. So definitely some interesting results in my first day of testing G-Sync on FreeSync monitors. I did go back and review the footage and I saw no instances of tearing or blanking or any other of the anomalies that Nvidia claimed would be present on my BenQ EX3501R. At least that was my experience on the one monitor that worked. Again, the Pixio refused to even recognize as a FreeSync compatible display and didn't have a checkbox for me to even click to allow the technology to work. When playing games, the EX3501R from BenQ was a great experience. It was as if I was playing on a native G-Sync panel. However, it was not without issues. When I ran the UFO test, I had some random issues in full screen of sometimes running at 60 hertz and sometimes running at 100. And sometimes the screen would just randomly blank out for seconds at a time, which is one of the issues that Nvidia brought up may be possible with these FreeSync panels. 
It was far from perfect, and it is something that I'm hoping NVIDIA can address in the future with some possible software updates. That is, if NVIDIA plans on supporting FreeSync into the future. Just because they turned on the feature doesn't mean they plan on supporting FreeSync 100% on every panel moving forward. Remember, as part of this announcement, NVIDIA split G-Sync into three separate tiers. There's G-Sync Capable, which is all of the FreeSync panels that are on the market today that you can turn on in features except the Pixio, which didn't seem to work. There's G-Sync Compatible, which are the 12 panels that NVIDIA tested out of the gate that work 100% and met all of NVIDIA's criteria. And then there's G-Sync Premium or Certified or Gold or whatever the world they called it. Those are their existing G-Sync hardware locked panels that work out of the box. We do know that there are two separate tiers for FreeSync panels using NVIDIA G-Sync. What we don't know, however, is what the testing criteria is and if manufacturers will have the option to work with NVIDIA moving forward to get their panels fully certified. I hope that I'm wrong here, and I really hope NVIDIA plans on backing up FreeSync technology with the proper support and software updates that it needs. However, the whole reason that G-Sync was introduced was to prove that G-Sync was a better technology than the open source FreeSync alternative. And something tells me that FreeSync on NVIDIA may just be another platform to advertise that you should buy a G-Sync monitor instead. But that's enough tinfoil hat talk out of me. What do you guys think of NVIDIA's move to support FreeSync on NVIDIA-based graphics cards? And do you have any experience testing hardware on your own? Let me know in the comments down below. Genuinely curious to see what your experience is. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And make sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. As always, I'm Jeff, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.